Hello there. Um, I've had an idea for a project for some time now. Um, and what it was is I've, I've always wanted to have um, some flickering uh, firebox lighting in inside the steam locomotive. This one I've, I, I bought some time ago. Um, it's a Backman 9F Evening Star, which is a locomotive I've wanted on my layout for some time now. Um, this one is, is DCC ready, so I'm hoping there's going to be an 8-pin socket inside and the reason why I want an 8 pin socket is because I've bought a TTS decoder for it. Um, this one I wanted to add sound as well so I've, I've bought the, the 9F digital sound decoder for it uh, and one of my idea is, is um, if I just look at my little crib sheet here this is a typical layout for a um, 8 pin connector uh, and I see that pin three is is normally it normally says unused on some of the pin diagrams, um, but I think it, it, that that can be used as an auxiliary function. So one of my what my plan is is to use the supply from pin three to uh, power up some LED lamps in the firebox of the locomotive. So that's my plan. Um, and what I've what I've done is I've already bought some. LEDs. These are flickering LEDs of various colours, orange, red and yellow, and these are three millimetre diameter, which is about as small as I can uh, as small as I can find. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to have a look at how easy it's going to be to wire up these LEDs and the sort of size that they are going to take up when I've when I've uh, put them together. And I just need to double check that the actual decoder I'm using can support that function. So I've got the uh, the, the, the piece of paper out of the uh, the decoder, um, which is very comprehensive, I have to say. And I'm just looking at this diagram here, which tells me about the decoder socket configuration. Uh, pin three is the one that we're going to use, um, and it does say on here that it, is a, it is an auxiliary function so that's exactly what we need but also I've just noted it says there that that function is F18 so I'm glad I read that because otherwise I would have thought it was F1 or F0 so that's fine F18 um, and also I'm just looking at this little diagram here that says that a typical example of a lighting configuration and I think it's universal for all the lighting pins on the uh, on the decoder but we have a 12 to 15 volt supply from the decoder into our lighting so we need to take that into account with um, the need for any resistors for the lights we're going to use so um, let me just get my bits and bobs together and we'll have a look at the the leds okay i've, I've taken three of the leds out and put them in my little tester um, so that they're all working okay so there's a, um, an orange a yellow and a red there they probably all look the same colour on this this uh, this lens, but they are different slightly. Um, so that's quite straightforward to do, and I'm probably going to put them in a little cluster like that, like a sort of triangular little cluster. And in terms of wiring up, wiring them up, this is my, this is my plan basically. It's going to be red, yellow, and orange in series. Uh, the voltage from the DCC pin is going to be 12 to 15 volts according to the uh, the leaflet with the decoder. So I've just done a quick calculation on nine using a PC uh, PC LED calculator, and it and it recommends using a um, a resistor around 500 ohms, so 510 ohms I'm using here. So I'm going to wire these up together now. Uh, put a 510 ohm resistor in as well, and see what they look like. Okay, so all I've done there is I've now soldered three of those LEDs together one of each colour um, and it comes out in a small triangular shape. Um, I don't know if you can see the soldering there but I've just tried to make it as small as I possibly could so it takes up as uh, the minimal amount of room as, as, as possible. So there's three LEDs, um, there's that yellow shrouding hides the resistor um, and that's it really, it's, it's quite small. It looks very bright on the screen, it isn't that particularly bright. And I'm running this through my, my little transformer at 12, maybe 13 volts. So, just out of interest, if I turn that voltage down, 
I'm still going. Yeah, so it's still lighting up anywhere between sort of 6 volts and 12 volts. Um, just want to recap on LEDs in case you're not familiar with how they, they operate. Um, uh, as far as I'm aware, all LEDs come with a long leg and a short leg. The long leg is the positive and the short leg is the negative. And that's important because LEDs are uh, polarity dependent. In other words, if you get them the wrong way round, they won't light up. Um, so just to prove I'm not lying, if I put my three volt battery on here, we have light. If I turn that around, no light. So we need to make sure that the white ray wound. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the way I've done that little cluster is I've just put three LEDs very close together. So I've just used a leg to solder from one to t'other. And obviously, if we got that around the wrong way, then we've been, essentially none of these would light up because if one of those was around the wrong polarity, it would just stop the electrical current going through the whole thing like a valve. So I needed to make sure that they are all around the right way polarity wise so this is a very this is this circuit here if, in real life if you like positive comes in through a resistor so the positive terminal on one led comes out the negative into positive out to negative into positive out to negative and then to our ne negative circuit so it's just a just a little note to say this is how leds work and you need to make sure that the polarity is correct when you are wiring them up like that that was it Right, I've, I've taken the case off the locomotive. Um, that is the DCC socket, in case you've never seen one before. That's a blanking plate, so it runs in DC mode. So I'm just going to take that off, put my uh, new decoder chip on, and obviously probably have to dismantle this so I can find out where I can run my auxiliary power from. Um, this is a case. So my plan is to drill a hole through the firebox doors there and insert from behind my flickering LEDs. Um, at the moment, I think, I think there's gonna be room, but until we, until we actually do some further work, we can't be absolutely sure. So that looks okay. There's, um, there's a screw there that goes through there, which I'll have to remove, because I'm thinking my drill will go right through that, that, that part there. So, I think it's looking okay so what I'm going to do now is I am going to drill a hole through the firebox doors there the diameter needs to be something like that so probably six seven millimeters um, to obviously get enough um, enough, an, enough of an aperture for the for the LED light to shine right oh, I, I've drilled a hole through the um, firebox doors a uh, seven millimeter hole I've used. Uh, I was going to make it square it up to match the doors, but I think it's not need really, as it's, it's unlikely to ever be seen that close up. Um, so there's my hole. Um, if I put that back on the chassis, um, and I've used, all I've done is I've used a stick just to work out how much room I've got behind the door. So I've put a little pencil mark in there. So there's there's the room behind the firebox doors, and with my with my lights, I can see that, that that should work all right because there's plenty of room behind there. I obviously don't want the lights sticking out into the cab, and I want them back here. So now I'm just going to come up with a, a way of holding the lights in place, and maybe I want to think about putting a little box around those just to keep the light within that area. Maybe some reflective tape or something just to help the light come through the firebox but let, let's let's see what they look like just just this is sort of jerry rigged up and see what that looks like right um i've on the moment i've just put a bit of blue tack there and stuck my um my little light cluster against the uh the back of the chassis there as you can see i've had to bend the the wires up over so that so that it fits snugly so fortunately there was enough giving the uh the resistor to be able to bend it bend it around the, the wire terminal on that. So that'll do for a little test. Let's turn on my little transformer. So yeah, that's all that's all good. Looks quite bright in the lens. Um, let's have a look. I'll put the case back on. One handed if I can. There we go. 
Um, oh, that looks pretty good. You can see that. Obviously, you're never going to be able to see it from the back in this direction. So if that looks too bright, I'm not too fussed about that. In fact, I'm not even worried about um, having a box around the lights. I think they're fine as they are. Let me turn this light off. I think that looks pretty good. So I think I think all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fix that light into position with some glue. I'm not going to bother um, boxing it in or anything. Um, and then all I need to do then is um, is wiring the light cluster to the to the DCC chip, which I'll do now. So I'm going to take the uh, the, the the blanking plate out of the socket on the locomotive. As I said before, this is put in here so that this locomotive can run in DC or analog mode. But we want to obviously replace that blanking plate with our decoder. So I'm just going to pop this off. Shouldn't be too difficult to get out. Just gently prise it off. So so that's that's the blanking plate. Um, and there's our socket. Um, what we need to figure out is which one of these is pin one, which, oh, hang on, here we go. I don't know if you can see that, it says one there. Normally there's a little, um, a little white arrow or a one, so that tells me that's pin one. So looking at my little, um, my little crib sheet here, if that's pin one, then pin two, pin three. So going back to here, pin one, pin two, pin three. So that's the pin I want to connect my flickering lights into. So what I'm going to now do is take this, this little board off and see if I can solder from the underside to wire in my flickering lights. I've just taken a single screw out. Uh, I've just put a little bit of yellow pin on there to remind me that that's pin three because obviously when I turn it upside down it's going to be reversed. So I would say that that's pin three there and I'm, I'm guessing that that solder pad there is going to provide me the access to pin 3. I'll check that with a, a continuity meter. While I'm doing this, if I was going to use the other lighting systems uh, for the front and rear lighting, I would be doing exactly the same here. I would be looking for, uh, what is it? Uh, rear light is pin 2 and the front light is pin 6 and the common return for all the lights is pin 7. So I would just work out which pin I need and then that would tell me which one to uh, solder my um, my wire to. So that's, that's pin three there. And pin seven is there. Because I'm looking at my, my chart at the same time. So that's fine. Uh, I've just checked the continuity to make sure that they are correct and then I can solder um, my my supply in inverted commas onto pin three and the return onto pin seven. Bearing in mind, if we look at my little diagram again, um, the, the blue is the common return for all my lighting and that is the positive. So when I mentioned before about the need to make sure the polarity is right, um, we need to make sure that the positive side of the LEDs is on this side of, of the wiring. So negative, positive. If we got it wrong, the lights wouldn't light up, light up, so we just need to reverse them. But let's try and get it right the first time. So this is just a quick continuity test to make sure that these pads are connected together. I'm pretty sure they are, but let's just check anyway. So this is the, the blue, this is the blue wire, pin 7. I'm just making sure that that pad there connects with the pad there. Yeah, okay. So I can solder my blue wire onto that pad, pad 7, and I can solder my green wire there onto pad 3. Okay. Okay, we'll give this a go. Um, pin 3... That one there. Pin seven is the common return, so positive. And I'm using red on my layout. Okay. 
There we go. Should be fine. So there's my TTS chip, and this uh, chip is, is here. Uh, this is the, the plug. Um, you may be able to just see this is one on there, so that tells me that that is pin one, and I know it's pin one anyway because there's an orange wire going to it. So pin one is in socket one. Um, I think we're all good to go for a test run now. Uh, what I'm going to have to do now is configure my uh, controller to accept this TTS chip. So once I've done that, I can then give it a test run before I put everything back together. Just a slight digression here, um, just showing you how I set up this in uh, Z21, which is the app I use to control my locomotives. Uh, so I've set up a new locomotive, uh, and on the functions, these are all the various functions you get with the TTS sound chip. And if you look down number 18, number 18, I've created an, a function 18 called Firebox. So basically that will just turn on the Firebox flicker and turn it off again. So I'm going to program the uh, program the TTS chip on my layout um, and give it a go. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything works. Right, I've uh, um, got the locomotive on my, my programming track here on my layout. So if I've done everything correctly here, I've, I've set the address for the locomotive, set up the uh, the TTS chip. So fingers crossed, everything is now good. So I can just test test it out by checking if the sound works. That's good. Yeah. So all I need to check is that the function 18 controls the firebox lighting. Everything crossed. Hey, there we go. So turn it off. Brilliant. That's good. So I'm now going to put the case back on, try and fit the speaker in somewhere, and we should be good to go. Come on. 